What can science tell us about getting a better night's sleep? Some people think of sleep as a luxury. You can slash back on it. After all, that's what caffeine is for. Many other people, however, struggle to get enough sleep. So, what is going on inside your brain when you're sleeping? How do you know if you're getting enough? And what, if anything, can you do to improve the quality? Apparently this is the easiest and most reliable way to find out. At least that's what the researchers tell me. What's happening now is they're attaching EEG electrodes to my scalp so that they can measure what happens to me as I fall asleep and while I am asleep. I'm slightly worried as to whether I'll actually be able to sleep with these things on my head, but um, we shall see. Can you tell? Good morning, by the way. Good morning, either. What, what happened? How did you get on? It went all right, actually, because um, that's a portable electroencephalogram, and I went off and had it analysed, and I see myself as an insomniac, and I did indeed wake up at three in the morning. But uh, what was really interesting and I wasn't aware of, for example, is in the first phase of sleep, when you go into it, deep sleep, uh, one of the things that happens is that your short-term memories get consolidated and turned into long-term memories. So if you don't get that first phase, then you don't clear the space for new memories. And that's why if you're a student and you decide to cram in lots of stuff, it's a really, really bad idea. I uh, see. I mean, we're, we're sort of semi-fascinated by sleep because of <laughs> yes, the, the time we get up in the morning, really, basically. But um, yeah. it's very interesting. You did a big experiment as well um, with people getting six and a half hours sleep and then seven and a half hours sleep. That's and right. very stark findings, actually. It was remarkable because we got them, we sleep-deprived them, we measured all sorts of things about them, and then we let them sleep well, for an hour a day. Well, you say sleep-deprived. Is six and a half hours... You wouldn't presume that was sleep-deprived, I actually. think for some people it isn't, and for other people it is, and I think for most people it is. I think on average we probably do need around seven and a half to eight hours sleep mm. a night. Certainly with this lot, what we found is when we cut their sleep by one hour, lots and lots of genes, in fact 50 genes are associated with all sorts of bad things, yeah. got switched on, things to do with inflammation and other factors. And what it also does is it kind of messes with your brain, partly to do with memory, but also the emotional content of your brain, your ability to actually uh, make sense of the world. If you're sleep deprived, that's a bad thing. Well, it's fascinating why, how you go about these subjects because the, the sleep thing, not that we're obsessed by it or anything, <laughs> but I have found that as I've got older, yeah. I've needed less sleep. Right. Is, is, that, is that relevant in any sense? Or have you found that it is how people... That is generally that. true, although some people never adapt. Uh, that you can do with less sleep, the quality of your sleep changes and it becomes um, poorer, frankly, that as you get older. Does uh, it? It does. But um, there are certain things you can do, for example, another thing that surprised me is we have receptors in the eyes for blue. So yes. if you look at screens late at night or you decide to get up at three in the morning and look at your computer, that is a really, really bad idea. Because it's the blue light in the computer that basically switches on um, various things in your brain and that keeps you awake.